welcome to our evening. Today, we are going to demonstrate how to make a mummy and <laughs> show how the ancient Egyptians prepared their dead for mummification. The word ibu is an ancient Egyptian word meaning purification. This was the name for the mummification tent. I am Nefer Sharon, and I am joined by my two priestesses, Nefer Ella and Nefer Rachel. Nefer was an ancient Egyptian word that meant beauty or goodness and was incorporated into many female names. Some were queens you may have heard of, like Nefertiti and Nefertari. Mummification was performed by male priests, but because we are all female, we're going to bend the rules just a little. Priests also shave their bodies and heads for purification to be clean, but we discussed this ahead of time, and we decided that we would keep our hair during this demonstration. Right, girls? Right! During mummification, priests would wear a mask to represent the god Anubis. Anubis was an important deity as he was the god of embalming. He is in the form of a jackal. Jackals were associated with cemeteries and the dead, as jackals would prowl around graveyards. Now for Rachel will be performing as Anubis. Many people think that the ancient Egyptians were obsessed with death due to the large amount of tombs they built and because they made mummies. It is easy to think this because we have so many mummies who are still with us today kept in museums. Actual fact, the ancient Egyptians were obsessed with life. Everything they did was to ensure their ability to live in the next world forever. The ancient Egyptians believed that when someone died, the soul would leave the body to be reunited with the body again once it was mummified and buried. In order for this to happen, the soul would need to be able to recognize the body to go back with it. To be reunited, they could live forever. So making a mummy of your body was very important. Today we're going to show how this is done on Kia. She is not real, she is made from plastic parts. So first, we are going to wash the body with palm wine and water from the River Nile. The River Nile was very important to the ancient Egyptians as water is important to sustain life. Next, we are going to have Neferella here, who is called the slitter, make an incision or an, and a cut on the left side of the body so we can remove the internal organs from inside. Run, Ella! She needs to run, as she will be hit with stones if she doesn't. In ancient Egypt, you were not allowed to cause damage to a human body. Although it was necessary to cut a body for mummification, the ritual of stoning and yelling curses at the slitter was done after the opening was made. The organs were important to remove so that moisture could be removed from the body and so the organs could be preserved. The body and organs will be packed with and in a substance called natron, which is made up of four chemicals. Two of these main chemicals you may know already as we have them in our own kitchens today. They are table salt and baking soda. Right, girls. Natron, natron comes from a valley in Egypt called the Wadi Natron. Wadi is an Arabic word meaning valley. After these organs are preserved in the natron, they are then placed in jars like these, called canopic jars. Each jar is topped with a guardian deity, representing each organ. The guardians are called the four sons of Horus, and were to protect the organs. Okay, let's get started. First, we will remove this organ. Can you guess what it is? Neferella? <laughs> Can you guess what it is? Okay, well this, this is the liver. The liver, right! If you said the liver, then you would be correct. And this, the liver, once it's preserved, goes into this jar, represented with a human head. He's called Imseti, who was um, the guardian of the liver. Next, we are going to remove these. Do you know what these are? The chest pan? Sorry? Lungs. Yes, if you also said the lungs just like Nefer Ella, you would be right. The lungs go into this jar represented with a baboon head. His name is Happy. Next comes this organ. Do you know what this is? The stomach. That's right, Nefer Ella. And if you said the stomach, you would be correct. 
The stomach, once it's preserved, goes into this jar, represented by the jackal, and his name is Duamutaf. Lastly, we are going to remove, last guess, what's this? Intestines. You, you are right, Nefrella. These are the intestines. And if you said the intestines, you were correct too. The intestines went into this jar, represented by Kebesenueth, who is a hawk deity. Now, can you tell me what this is? The heart. That is right, Nefer Rachel. That is the heart. If you guess the heart, then you are also correct. The heart is left in the body, as it was thought to be the center of intelligence and feelings. It is easy to think this, because when you become excited, your heart beats faster. So you would need this organ in the afterlife. So we're just going to put it back in, because Kia needs this. Next, we are going to remove the brain, as these were thought to be unimportant. A bone called the orbital bone, high in your nose, was smashed open and a long hook like this was inserted into the head, just like this. The brain would be scrambled around and either removed in pieces or poured out of the nose. There is also evidence that it could be removed from a hole in the back of the head. Now we are ready to leave the body to dry in the natron for the next 40 days. It has now been 40 days, and our body is ready for the next step for mummification. Mummification takes 70 days in total, so we have 30 days to complete the next steps. We are going to wash the body with water from the Nile River and pour nice smelling oils on it to make the skin pliable so we can move the body parts. The body is stuffed with linen packing, sawdust, and leaves to make it look like it did in life. The body is anointed with oils again, in perfume oils as well. Now we are going to wrap our mummy. In the interest of saving time, because 30 days is a long time, some of the wrapping is already done. The head and neck are wrapped first, then each finger and toe is wrapped individually. We will now continue to wrap the arms and the legs. As the body is wrapped, Amulets like these are placed between the layers of linen. The amulets are there to help the person journey through the underworld to get to the next life. Spells are read during the mummification to ward off evil spirits in the underworld and ensure a safe journey. The arms and legs are now tied together like this. And a scroll like this one, is placed in between the hands. The scroll contains important spells from the ancient Egyptian Book of the Dead, and it's placed there between the arms. A burial for a king is different, as the arms are crossed over the body like this. More linen is wrapped around the body, and resin is used to glue the wrappings. Resin is a glue from trees, and is painted between the layers. A cloth is then placed over the body which contains a drawing of the god of Osiris, who is an important god of the underworld. The body is wrapped in another cloth and secured with more strips of linen. The mummy will now be ready to be placed in the tomb. A ceremony called the opening of the mouth ritual is done by touching a tool called an adze to the mouth so the mummy can be reanimated, so it can eat and drink and speak again in the next life. Once this ritual is done, the mummy is placed in the coffin and sarcophagus and placed in the tomb. Everything that the deceased had in life is placed in the tomb to take with them. Furniture, clothing, jewelry, food and drink is placed in the tomb with the mummy. Along the journey in the underworld, the deceased heart is weighed on a scale against a feather of truth. If the person lived a life of good deeds, then they will make it to the next life called Field of Reeds, where they will live forever in the afterlife. 
However, if the heart is heavier than the feather, a mean creature named Amit, who is part lion, crocodile, and hippopotamus, will eat the heart, which would not allow them to live in the afterlife. This is why the heart is so important to stay in the body. So girls, do you think Kia will make it to the afterlife? Yes! Thank you for watching.